Hello everyone, welcome to another video from my YouTube channel. In today's video we will be talking about project dependencies and uh, logical relationships between activities. First of all, as defined in the practice standard for scheduling in the third edition, a logical relationship is a dependency between two activities or an activity and a milestone. Dependency has four types. The first one is mandatory, second one is discretionary, and third one is external, and the last one is internal. As it's very clear from its name, mandatory dependencies must be followed because either the contract or the law imposes them to be followed by the project. The discretionary which is also known as soft logic. These are determined by the project team or the organization itself. It's based on the best practices in the field. In this situation, an activity could be sequenced with other activity in more than two ways. So the project team decides which way to choose. The external dependencies are those which are out of the project team's control. The project team has no or very less amount of control on such dependencies. For the internal dependencies, they are totally under the project team's control. They can decide about them. The difference between dependency and relationship is that a dependency suggests that one activity is reliant to another activity. But it does not tell how is that reliant to that specific activity. But relationships clearly show how the activities are linked to each other. For example, here are the four types of relationships given. Finish to start, start to start, start to finish, and finish to finish. So the activities could be linked as finish to start. When the predecessor activity finishes, the successor activity can begin. To make this more clear, you can assume this scenario. Dinner starts when the cooking is completed. So as long as the cooking is not completed, you cannot start with your dinner. Cooking must be completed in order to start the dinner. Another type of re logical relationship between activities is start to start. Let me tell you one thing. The most common type of relationship which is used in project management today is the finish to start type of relationship. In start to start, the successor activity must be started in order that the predecessor activity can be started. For example, cameras must be started in order to start the live broadcasting. We all watch television on a daily basis. As you can see, the live broadcasting that we are watching on our televisions, if the cameras are not installed and turned on in the site, the live broadcasting cannot be started. Another type of relationship is start to finish. The predecessor must be started in order to consider the successor as completed. New IT systems must be operational before turning off the old system. So you're working in an organization and the organization is trying to upgrade their IT systems so once the installation for the new IT systems is completed and they are operational, that's when you can stop the old IT system. The last type of relationship is finish to finish. Predecessor activity must finish in order to consider the successor activity as completed. 
A football match should end so the live broadcast can end. If you're a football or soccer fan, when you watch the live match, as long as the match goes on, as long as it continues, the live broadcasting continues. At the point that match ends, the live broadcasting ends. Another topic that we will be talking about is lead and lag. In schedule management plan, when you're developing your schedule in order to meet the requirements of the stakeholders and the organization, you should bring some activities forward and delay some activities in order to meet those requirements. As you can see in this figure here, the predecessor activity and the successor activity. The successor activity is brought forward before the predecessor activity ends. As you can see in the definition here, which is taken from the practice standard for scheduling, the third edition, lead is a modification of a logical relationship that allows the acceleration of the successor activity. So in lead, the successor activity is accelerated. It starts earlier than the predecessor activity ends. As we saw in lead, we brought the successor activity a bit forward. In here, you delay the successor activity. This could be for different reasons. For example, in the construction industry, when you are casting concrete, you should wait for a specific amount of time until the concrete is dry so you can carry on other works. Assume that activity A here is casting the concrete. So this amount of time between activity A and activity B is the time which is required for the concrete to dry. So this is called lag. Lag is a modification of a logical relationship that imposes a delay of the successor activity. This definition is also taken from practice standard for scheduling, the third edition. It's also available on PMBOK, the sixth edition. In the next slide, we will talk about path convergence and divergence. They are also related to the types of relationships and sequencing activities. In the path convergence, as you can see in the figure here, path convergence is when an activity has more than one predecessor. And path divergence is when an activity has more than one successor. Such activities should be monitored closely in order to mitigate the risk of delaying any activity on this path. For example, if we see here in the path convergence, if any of the predecessors are delayed, they will result in delay in start of the successor. So it's a bit risky. Also, for the path divergence, if the predecessor is delayed, it will result in delay in these two activities. I hope this video has helped you broadening your knowledge about relationships, dependencies, and any other terms of project management related to this field. If you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.